Hello friends, welcome to a new lecture on anti-Parkinsonian drugs. So anti-Parkinsonian drugs can be classified into two types. One includes drugs which affect the dopaminergic actions and the other include the drugs which affect the brain cholinergic system. The drugs affecting the dopaminergic actions are most commonly used. Among them, the most common drug is dopamine precursor which is levodopa. So this levodopa, this enters the blood brain barrier and gets converted into dopamine. Whereas the second drug is peripheral decarboxylase inhibitor. This peripheral decarboxylase inhibitor includes carbidopa and benzerazide. So these peripheral decarboxylase inhibitors, these will inhibit the conversion of levodopa into dopamine peripherally. These cannot cross the blood brain barrier, so these don't have action centrally. So as a result, these will increase the levodopa concentration peripherally and thus increasing, increasing the um, transport of levodopa into the blood brain, brain through blood brain barrier. The next group of drugs is dopaminergic agonists. The dopaminergic agonists include bromocryptin, ropinirol and pramipregzol. These dopaminergic agonists, these will activate the D1, D2, D3 receptors of dopamine uh, and thus increase the production of dopamine. So thus increasing the dopamine availability in the brain. The next group of drugs is MAOB inhibitors, selagelin and resagelin. These include MAOB means um, monoamine oxidase B inhibitors. So these monoamine oxidase B inhibitors, these include selagelin and resagelin. Normally the dopamine or the levodopa, uh, the dopamine, mainly the dopamine, it is degraded by monoamine oxidase B inhibitors. So these monoamine oxidase, uh, this is in, this is degraded by monoamine oxidase B enzyme. So as a result, these uh, inhibitors will inhibit monoamine oxidase B enzy en enzyme and thus increasing the uh, dopamine activity. The next group of drugs is COMT inhibitors, that is catechol o methyl transferase inhibitors. These include entercapone and tolcopone. The other way of levodopal, uh, levodopal degradation is through COMT, that is catechol o methyl transferase enzyme. So, as a result, these drugs will inhibit the catechol o methyl transferase enzyme and thus increase the availability of levodopa and also dopamine, mainly the tolcopone. Then, the glutamate antagonist or NMDA receptor antagonist or dopamine facilitator. This includes amantadine. These are the dopaminergic, uh, uh, the, these are the drugs which have dopaminergic action and these are most commonly used for Parkinsonism. Uh, whereas, the other group of drugs which are drugs affecting brain cholinergic system. So, these are central anticholinergics and antihistamines. So, these will act act on ACH neurotransmitter. These will these are mostly given for drug induced Parkinsonism, not for normal Parkinsonism. Uh, for normal Parkinsonism, we give for Parkinson's disease, idiopathic Parkinsonism or Parkinson's disease, we give drugs which are affecting dopaminergic action most commonly. Sometimes we also give these, but let us learn about each of the each of the drug uh, clearly and separately. So the first drug which I would like to discuss is the dopamine precursor which is levodopa. So levodopa generally, normally if a person is given, if a person takes only levodopa, this levodopa, if the person only takes levodopa, so among levodopa, if, if he takes only levodopa, then 99% of that levodopa, it gets converted into dopamine only peripherally. 99% only this reaction occurs among 99%. And only 1% of levodopa will enter the brain and it gets converted into dopamine. This levodopa, whenever it is converted into dopamine, peripherally, it has many adverse effects. Like it can give rise to tremors, it can give rise to, it has cardiac actions. So dopamine has lots of actions. So as a result, this levodopa, whenever it gets converted peripherally, it has many side effects. So, um... So this levodopa always it is given along with dopa carbox decarboxylase inhibitors like carbidopa or benzerazide always it is given along with them. 
okay so this is the whole chart which i have already explained to you in, in my previous class please visit previous class for uh, knowing it now uh, so this liver dopa it gets it it, it, should, it crosses the blood brain barrier and it gets converted to dopamine so this also gets peripherally uh, degraded by, uh, degraded by dopa decarboxylase to dopamine so this causes this is the cause of many side effects so what are the uh, pharmacokinetics the liver dopa it is absorbed by active transport process for aromatic amino acids it has slow gastric emptying and it is degraded in gut wall and liver because it is degraded it degraded in gut wall and liver it is not available uh, to the brain so as a result only less of the dop liver dopa will cross blood brain barrier the food competes with absorption of liver dopa as a result um whenever we take liver dopa along with food it is less absorbed so what are the pharmacological actions of liver dopa the pharmacological actions of liver dopa include number 1 cns actions improves parkinson's symptoms so whenever liver dopa is given it enters the blood brain it crosses the blood brain barrier and enters the brain and gets converted into dopamine and decreases the dopamine do, decreases the parkinsonism symptoms and thus it improves the parkinson symptoms first and foremost hypokinesia or rigidity will re resolve first hypokinesia or rigidity will resolve and later that tremors most commonly the tremors in parkinsonism are resting tem tremors so later the resting tremors will resolve and later the secondary symptoms like posture gait handwriting that is uh, uh, micrographia speech hypophonia facial expression that is expressionless face uh, expressionless faces or masked faces so all these will resolve then behavior will also resolve uh, general alerting response can occur sometimes if it is given in higher doses it can lead to excitement and also frank psychosis sexual activity increases because erectile dysfunction will also be uh, cleared and dementia will persist but dementia will persist so these are the different uh, effects on of liver dopa on central nervous system the effects of liver dopa on card and on cardiovascular system dopamine this is peripherally this activates beta adrenergic receptors so thus there is activation of beta adrenergic receptors this causes tachycardia or blood pressure may be normal or it can also sometimes cause postural hypotension may develop so this beta this dopamine it can activate beta adrenergic receptors whenever the beta adrenergic receptors are activated this can cause tachycardia sometimes postural hypotension can develop uh, slowly tolerance will develop generally these are the main reasons for these are the main side effects which occur because of liver dopa when it is uh, converted to dopamine peripherally even ctz that is uh, mm, chemo chemo receptor tactile zone which is present uh, chemo tactic zone which is present on medulla so dopamine peripherally it will activate chemo tactic zone on medulla and it will in turn activates nausea and vomiting so there is increased nausea and vomiting because of liver dopa and endocrine endocrinologically dopamine will activate pituitary mammotrope and thus inhibit prolactin release okay it will also acts on somatotrophs and it will activate growth hormone secretion both these are not seen in uh, basically the growth hormone secretion even if it is increased it is not seen much because this is also seen this is not much seen in adults uh, in the patients uh, whereas if there is prolactin release inhibition of prolactin release is seen in the patients so these are the different pharmacological actions of liver dopa now then what are the side effects of liver dopa the side effects of liver dopa just at the initiation of therapy liver dopa whenever it gets converted into dopamine peripherally it will activate chemo uh, tactic zone on the medulla and this way this may cause nausea vomiting sometimes it can also cause postural hypotension dizziness because it decreases blood pressure and because of its action on the heart just similar to beta receptors it can uh, cause tachyarrhythmias and also it can cause tachycardia it can also cause cardiac arrhythmias and exacerbation of angina 
Sometimes it can also cause alteration in taste sensation. All these are seen at the initiation of therapy, at the initial few days of therapy. Later, after prolongation of therapy, there are abnormal movements like dyskinesias can occur. After slowly prolongation of therapy, sometimes abnormal movements like dyskinesias can occur. So, dyskinesias include facial tics, grimacing, tongue thrusting, choreoethetoid movements of limbs. So, these abnormal movements can occur. So, these abnormal movements are mostly do dose dependent. There are even behavioral effects can occur. This is due to limbic system. So, these include mild anxiety, nightmares to severe depression, mania, hallucinations, mental confusion, frank psychosis, all these can occur. Because it can cause frank psychosis, it is always and always contraindicated in psychotic diseases. Then there can be fluctuation on motor performance. There can be on or off effect. The on or off effect tells us that if the Parkinson's, if the levodopa is given, then after prolonged therapy, when the patient is when the patient is given or when the patient takes levodopa, then there can be abnormal movements. That is, dyskinesias can occur. If the patient does not take levodopa, okay, or if the dose of the levodopa decreases, the pharmacological lef, uh, level, the therapeutic level in the body decreases. In such cases, the patient will have Parkinson's symptoms. If he is on drug therapy, he will have the side effects of levodopa whereas if he does not take he will have parkinson's symptoms that is called as on and off effect on whenever there is uh, levodopa is present and the patient has abnormal movements that is on effect off effect when levodopa concentration in the blood decreased and as a result the patient has parkinsonian symptoms so that is off effect thus the patient can have on and off, uh, off effect as there is decrease, whenever there is decrease in concentration, see first there is increase in concentration of levodopa and slowly there is decrease in concentration of levodopa. So whenever there is decrease in concentration of levodopa, the recurrence of Parkinson's symptoms can occur because there is decreased dopamine. So as a result, that is called as wearing off effect. So this levodopa is contraindicated in glaucoma in cardiovascular disease because it can cause cardiac arrhythmias and it is also contraindicated in psychosis because it can cause uh, frank psychosis. So these are the different uh, side effects and contraindications of levodopa. Now let us learn about the interactions of levodopa. Interactions include pyridoxine. Pyridoxine, whenever levodopa is given along with pyridoxine, this will increase peripheral decarboxylation because pyridoxine activates decarboxylase, dopa decarboxylase and thus it increases peripheral decarboxylation and thus decreases the availability of dopamine to brain. As a result, we always have to in avoid pyridoxine. That is, vitamin B6 should never be given along with levodopa. Then, the drugs like phenol thiazines, butyrophenones, metoclopramide, all these will block, block dopamine, dopamine receptors. And non-selective MAO inhibitors, these will prevent the degradation of dopamine and noradrenaline. Thus, there is hypertensive crisis. So, as a result, these are not given with non-selective MAO receptors because MAO inhibitor is of two types, MAO B and MAO A. So, because of because they are, it is non-selective, so that will cause degradation of both adrenaline and also dopamine. That will result in hypertensive crisis. It should not be given along with antihypertensive drugs because dopamine by itself has uh, a chance of uh, has a side effect of postural hypotension. So whenever you give along with antihypertensive drugs, antihypertensive drugs also decrease the blood pressure. As a result, there is synergistic effect of decrease in blood pressure, which will cause, uh, which will precipitate or increase postural hypotension. Uh, it should not be given along with atropine. Uh, if it can, it, 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 whenever it is given along with atropine or anti Parkinson's, uh, anti cholinergic drugs, then there is additive action. So these are the different interactions of dopamine, uh, levodopa with other drugs. So this is about levodopa. In our next class, we will learn about the other drugs which are involved in Parkinson's disease. Thank you guys for watching my lecture. If you have any doubts, please comment it in the comment section. I know I'm not writing anything because. All the drugs which are given, you know, drug, drugs is just, you'll have to know the mechanism of action and the side effects. And uh, even if I write everything, it's something like reading everything. So I thought I'll just explain some issues so that uh, you'll have a good idea of it. If you want any notes, you can uh, 
comment it in the comment section or you can send me your email id so that i can send you the notes so thank you guys for watching my lecture if you have any doubts please comment it in the comment section if you feel something is inadequate in this lecture even then comment it in the comment section thank you for watching my lecture thank you